Welcome to the basics video where I will go over the basics of the phone that the average person will care about. This video is for the Google Pixel 2. Feel free to check out my specs video for a more detailed explanation of this phone. This HTC made Pixel 2 has a 12.2 megapixel back camera along with an 8 megapixel front camera. Overall, the pictures are amazing regardless if it's day or night. The portrait mode is better than most phones that I've used, which is surprising because most of those phones have three or more cameras, while this one only has two. There is much more to explain about that, so I will leave an article in the description for you to read. The lack of slow motion capture of 1080p at 240 frames per second isn't really that surprising because the phone still has a Snapdragon 835 processor. But it does make it a little bit difficult to compete with the iPhone 8, which was released around the same time as this phone and is capable of slow motion video at 1080p at 240 frames per second. The camera is capable of 4K video at 30 frames per second, which is great. What else is great is that it looks like Google doesn't limit the amount of time that you can record for. Sure, this will make the phone get hot, but remember that the phone offers a 2 year warranty. Just like the Google phone starting with the Nexus 5X and 6P, the phone has laser autofocus which is crazy fast. Unlike the 5X, 6P, Pixel, and Pixel XL, the camera has optical and electronic image stabilization. I mean come on, these cameras are amazing and that shouldn't be too surprising. These cameras will easily get a 9 out of 10. Android over the years has been like iOS. They've added a few good things and left out some even better things. By now, Android is getting old and is packing in a lot of features that we all want, thanks to some custom ROMs that have been out there for a while. We have features like the always on display, double tap to wake, and the fingerprint gesture. The stock experience leaves you with what you need and pushes out all the stuff you don't need. For me, it is pretty much perfect. There are things that I don't care about like split screen, but I will admit that it is a good feature. I'm just not used to it. I guess you could say that stock Android is lacking, but I think that that is the best part it leaves room for improvement. Also, if it's that big of a deal, these phones are a lot easier to root and install custom software on when compared to its competitors. For me, the software is perfect and crazy fast, so it will get a 9 out of 10. As for the battery, it's alright. The phone has a 2700 milliamp cell, so I can't be too surprised to learn that the battery isn't that good. It is better than the Nexus 5X, but I don't see it lasting a full day with very heavy usage. For me, it was pretty similar to the S8 Plus, which sounds good, but it really isn't. Speaking of the Nexus 5X, the Pixel 2 actually has the same battery capacity as the Nexus 5X. Bad move, Google. After 13 hours and 16 minutes of usage, my phone was left with 16%, and 3 hours and 21 minutes of that was screen on time. Another day, I got 15 and a half hours of usage with 49% remaining, and 1 hour and 27 minutes of that was screen on time. Another day I got 16 hours of usage out of this battery with 23% remaining, and 2 hours and 46 minutes of that was screen on time. All of these figures are with the brightness all the way up. Honestly, I did use this phone a lot more than I really do when I test these phones, so that might be why the battery was actually worse than I expected. Another thing is that this phone charges up pretty quickly, even with standard chargers, so I definitely take this as a bonus. With this said, there is no wireless charging option. The battery is not removable by the user, but that 2 year warranty should be able to get you a new battery when it goes bad, which generally happens after 300 to 500 days of usage. Overall, the battery category receives a 7.5 out of 10. As you may have guessed, this phone will be compared to the first Pixel. The Pixel 2 is now a little bit taller and a little bit thinner. Gone is the camera slope. Instead, Google went with the camera bump. The frame is squared off rather than rounded, and the fingerprint scanner is in the metal frame, rather than attached to the glass panel. Speaking of the panel, it looks like that glass was shrunk in half, which is good for those that break that glass easily. With the Pixel 2, water resistance was added, but the 3.5mm jack was erased from this phone. Why did Google do this? Wasn't this a big feature on the first generation Pixel? The front glass has been upgraded from Gorilla Glass 4 to Gorilla Glass 5, making it stronger, but it is still rocking a paper-thin AMOLED display under it. Another thing is that the speaker grille is larger, and there are now two on the front of this phone, giving the phone proper stereo speakers that it deserves. The back camera has changed for the better, adding optical image stabilization and adding other hardware to give this phone portrait mode and make AR stickers happen. The processor and the GPU were upgraded moving from the Snapdragon 821 processor to the Snapdragon 835 processor. The battery size has decreased by 70 milliamps. It's like these companies aren't even listening to their customers. 
The charging port stays the same with the USB-C port, but it has been bumped up from the USB 3.0 to USB 3.1. The active edge is a cool feature, but it is gimmicky in my opinion. If it was remappable, it might actually be pretty cool. Just a suggestion for you, Google. Or is it HTC? Lastly, there are minor additions like Bluetooth 5.0. Going into this review, I thought that the Pixel 2 was actually going to be a little bit of a downgrade from the Pixel 1, but it looks like the Pixel 2 is actually a pretty decent upgrade from the Pixel 1, so this category will get an 8 out of 10. Bigger battery. That's all we want. As always, glass is glass, but the real worry is the AMOLED display. The top glass is pretty strong, but the display under it is pretty fragile. Screen replacements will cost the same regardless if you damage the glass or the AMOLED under it and will run you about $170 to fix yourself or $240 for a third party to repair it for you. The camera lens will run you roughly $35 to fix or $8 to do it yourself. And the back glass panel will run you about $65 or $85 for someone to do it for you or $10 for you to do it yourself. It is smaller but you're the proof that this panel does break. The charging port can be replaced and will cost about $35 to do it yourself or $85 or more for a third party to do it for you. I have changed batteries in the Pixel 1 so I would assume that the Pixel 2 batteries would go bad after time and will run you about $30 to do it yourself or $65 to $85 for a store to do it for you. With all this said, Google does all these repairs, but the prices will vary depending on your situation. Also it seems like these parts are very difficult to find and the prices may go up over time. Overall, I would say that the Pixel 2 gets a 7 out of 10 for durability and repair costs. Now should you buy this phone? With a score of 81%, this phone is definitely the one to buy if you're looking for a phone that you can use with one hand. With the combination of stock Android and the hardware, I see this phone lasting a long time. I mean look, I still own the Nexus 6, which came out in 2014. I hope you learned something from these videos, but I want to learn something from you. Do you think that this phone will hold up better than its other competitors? Let me know in the comment section or on Twitter at Matt of RWR, and feel free to follow me on the social media listed above. Also, subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos like this. Every sub helps. Thanks for watching.